Yeah, this lesson is uh, representing algebra relationships in, in tables and graphs. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's our, our common course strand for our, our groovy teachers. And then our question is, how can we uh, use verbal descriptions, tables, and graphs to represent some algebra? Okay. Uh, all right. So, excuse me. <coughs> all right. So, um, uh, Angie's walking... Uh, Walking speed is five kilometers per hour, and May's walking speed is four kilometers per hour. Show how the distance each girl walks uh, is related. So, so for each girl, we're going to make a table and compare the times and distances. Okay, so so uh, here's a table for Angie's and a table for May's. And so for Angie, she walks uh, every uh, she travels five kilometers per hour. So let's look at these tables real quick. Okay, so we have. Here it is, the time in, in hours, that's what H stands for, and then the distance, D-I-S-T, is distance in kilometers. So doesn't it make sense that after um, zero hours, she didn't go anywhere, she traveled zero kilometers? And then since she travels uh, five kilometers per hour, then every every uh, hour she, she adds five kilometers. So after one is five, after two is ten, because it's five plus five, so three is going to be... Um, uh, 10 plus 5 and then 4 is going to be that uh, uh, 10 plus 5 is 15 so and then 4 um, uh, hours is going to be 20 okay and then for uh, May walks up uh, 4 kilometers so we're going to add 4 all the time so 8 plus 4 is 12 and 12 plus 4 is 16 okay so now for each girl let's make a graph showing their distance y as it depends on the time x okay now remember you guys um, uh, the this is this is always our our um, independent variable, our x variable, and this is our dependent variable, our y variable. Okay, so always the top row is our x, and the bottom row is our y's. Okay, and the y depends on x, so the distance depends on the time. Okay, <clears throat> and since uh, excuse me, uh, May walks four kilometers per hour. And and uh, Angie walks five kilometers per hour. Then their distances are a little bit different. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, make a graph that shows these distances as y depends on time x, and then we'll plot those from a from the table, and connect them with a straight line. Okay, and we can connect them with a straight line because um, Angie and or May doesn't have to uh, walk you know exactly one one hour. They can walk one point two hours or 1.5 hours and so we can they can uh, walk fraction parts so so we can connect them with the straight line okay all right let's go ahead and do that here okay so here's our graphs right there okay and so what we're going to do is just we're going to go and graph um uh angie's time so we'll grab zero zero one five so here would be zero zero and then one five okay so this is going up by two so two four six so one five would be like right there and then uh, maze is going to be zero zero and one four okay so we'll plot zero zero and then go over one which is two squares and up four which is two squares okay anyways there's the zero zeros okay and then uh, there's the other ones right there all right and then what we're going to graph the um, let's graph these points right here so I'm going to graph on this one two comma ten so we'll go over two on the x-axis because remember this is our x-axis and this is our our y-axis right here. So over two up ten. So that's going to take us to right there. And then May is going to go uh, over two up eight. Okay. So over two up eight. Okay. We'll plot those points. Okay. And we'll just keep plotting and plotting, and then it says to connect them with a, a straight line. So there they are connected with the straight line. All right, now looking at those graphs, you guys, the steeper one means that the um, uh, that that person walks faster than the other person. The steeper the line, the faster their they call it uh, their rate of change. We'll talk more about that later. Okay. All right, so there they are right there. So Angie's equation is, since she walks 5 kilometers per hour, she's going to be uh, y equals 5x, and May is going to be y equals 4x. Okay, so there's their equations right there. Okay, all right, so uh, why does it make sense to connect the points in each graph, okay, and make a straight line? Well, the girls can walk for fractional parts of an hour, uh, and so that means they can travel for fractional parts of a kilometer. Okay. 
All right, so uh, so for example, say we're to, talking about people or or eggs or something. We can't do fractions of eggs or fractions of people, so we'd have to just do points, and we could not connect those in a straight line. But but since these uh, these ladies can walk fractional parts of an hour and fractional parts of a kilometer, we can connect them for a straight line. Here, let's go back for a second. Let's go back to uh, right here. So for example, let's say um, uh, Angie walks right here we you know a little bit over you know this is 4.5 so this would be like 4.75 did i say angie may so if we just go straight up then we can make a great guesstimate that that if we just go straight over that she's going to walk about um what's that 18.5 kilometers something like that okay all right so how can we use the tables to determine the girls walking which girl is walking faster so we can compare the distances after the same amount of time so for example uh, after after three hours angie walks 15 kilometers and after three hours may walks 12 kilometers so angie walks um, uh, more distance and then how can so I'm now I'm on the second part right here how can we use the graph to see which girl walks faster well that's it who has a steeper uh, uh, line right there so if they have a steeper line Angie is walking faster than than May okay all right so let's go ahead and write some equations from graphs right here so Charisse pays uh, the interest fee to visit a museum and then buys souvenirs at the gift shop the graph shows the relationship between the total amount she spends at the museum and the amount that she spends at the gift shop. Okay, so so remember, she goes to uh, she pays the interest fee to visit the museum, and then um, uh, and then she buys some souvenirs right here. So so when she walks into the museum, she didn't uh, so she didn't go to the gift shop shop. So it looks like she paid five dollars to get into the museum. So she didn't pay any money at the, um, at the at the gift shop. So so zero comma five means that um, that cost her five dollars to get in. And then the amount of money that she spends um, uh, at the gift shop, we're just going to keep adding uh, this this um, uh, the 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 gate fee okay does that make sense so uh, the graph shows the relationship between the total amount that she spends at the museum and the amount that she spends at the gift shop so write an equation to represent this data okay all right so here's our graph over here so let's read the order pairs from the graph and use them to complete a table to compare total uh, spent y to the amount spent on the gift shop okay Let's slide that up. Okay, so uh, well, not yet. So anyway, so so um, notice um, the gift shop. Uh, looks like she's going plus five, plus five, plus five. So let's go ahead and just add five to fifteen, so we get twenty right here. Five plus five is ten. Plus five is fifteen. Plus five is twenty, and then twenty-five. So uh, when we do that. Okay, uh, so what is the pattern in the table? Well, the pattern is this, you guys. The total amount is $5 more than the gift shop amount right there because the gate fee was $5. Okay, so um, uh, write an equation. So that would be Y equals X plus 5 because it's always $5 more because that's what the gate fee was. Okay, so identify the independent and dependent quantities in this situation and describe the possible values for each variable. Okay, so the dependent was the total amount that she spent, and um, and and non-negative just means they're always positive. Okay, so so the total amount she spent, she can't spend negative amount of dollars, so she's always spending positive amount. Okay, and the independent uh, is the amount she spent after she went to the gift shop. So. So we're going to draw a line through the points on the graph to find the point that represents Sharice's spending $18 at the gift shop and then use that point to find the total uh, that she would uh, spend if she spent $18 at the gift shop. Okay, so let's look at that, you guys. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. It said um, um, identify and describe the possible values for the variable. So sample answers might be the number is greater than 4. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so here's um, uh, this guy right here. Here's our graph right here. Okay, so um, uh, so so here is some um, uh, two, four. Here would be six right here, eight, ten, twelve. So these this axis is going up by twos. Okay, so this is the total amount right here, and this is the amount that she spent at the gift shop. So she spent zero dollars. It cost her five dollars to get in. Okay, if she spent five dollars it's going to give her 
uh, $10. Okay, so now we're going to draw a line through the graph where Cherie spends $18 at the gift shop. Okay, so that's down here, gift shop amount. So $18 would be right here. So we're going to go straight up right there. And then now we're just going to go straight over. And this will give us a good estimate, guesstimate of what she spent total. So right about there. So here's 20. This would be 22. So 23 bucks. So it looks like she's going to spend uh, uh, 23 bucks. Okay. So it just says use the point to find the total uh, she would spend if she spent $18 at the gift shop and then use the equation uh, to verify that our answer is. Well, remember the equation was y equals x plus 5. So here it's going to be, um, uh, we're going to just justify that 23 does equal 18 plus 5. I don't know where I got 8 from, so this should be a 5 right here. Sorry. Okay, so 18 plus 5, and so 23 equals 23, and so we did do that. So how can we use the graph to write an inequality that describes all possible values of y? Okay, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's my y values right here. <coughs> right here and so my y values don't start until right here at y equals 5 okay and since that's a solid dot right here we're including that so I'm going to say y is greater than because it keeps going up and up and up greater than or equal to 5 okay so all the y values are greater than or equal to 5 alright so an ordered pair x comma y notice that's in alphabetical order ordered pairs are always in alphabetical order sometimes you'll see a comma b or h comma k as you get into high school math but here we have x comma y x comes before y in the alphabet so ordered pairs are always in alphabetical order okay and so um, uh, the ordered pair that makes an equation something like a y equals x plus one true is called the solution of the equation and so the graph of an equation can represent all the ordered pairs that are solutions that make that equation true okay now this is just a sample right here but if I did like a x equals 1, then I get 1 plus 1 is 2, so y would equal 2. If x equals 2, then we go 2 plus 1 equals 3, so y would equal 3. Okay, so there's several infinitely many correct ordered pairs on this. So let's go ahead and graph this guy. Okay, so let's make a table. Okay, table of values to choose from uh, some, some values. You can do any values for x and then use the equation uh, to... Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to uh, oh find that's what that's supposed to be use the equation to find sorry to find uh, the corresponding y values okay all right let me just slide that up and clean this up this will be find sorry sorry my groovy other teachers here you guys so I send these to my uh, teachers in my district if they want them. If they have our Promethean board, you guys can have them. All right, so let's go ahead and make a table. Here's our table right here. Okay, so I, we can choose any x values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or a nice appropriate x value. So over here, x comma y, our x values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and our x axes, so we're going to go over 1 and find out what's our y value. And we're going to find out our y value by doing the x value plus 1, because x plus 1 equals y right there. So let's go ahead and plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here to find the y values, okay? So uh, let's plot the order pairs when we do this, okay? So there's, um, uh, notice we're just adding 1 to all of them, so 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so when we graph, we go over 1, up 2. Now we could graph a 0 if we wanted to, 0 plus 1 is 1. But, uh, well, I'm just choosing these points, okay, and there's 2 plus 1 is 3, so over 2, up 3, over 3, up 4, over 4, up 5, over 5, up 6, okay, and all we're doing is we're adding uh, 1 to all of these guys, okay, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, let me take that out, I meant to um, go back and get my little cursor right here, sorry, uh, Copying and pasting too much here. Okay. Anyway, so we're just graphing those, and then uh, now what we're going to do is draw a line through the plotted points to represent all the ordered pairs. Okay, so I'm just going to connect those with a straight line. All right, how about this? Y equals 2x. Okay, so y equals 2x. Let me get my little pointer here and I'm going to pull it down here so it's out of the way. 
All right, so so let's make a table, and then we'll um, uh, do one, two, three, four, five. We can also do zero. We can also do negative numbers. I don't want to do negative numbers with you till till later in this textbook, and your teachers will explain why. But um, uh, and plus they give us a graph also. So so we could have done zero for x if we wanted to because um, uh, we have uh, all of these ordered pairs right here. So um, uh, I can do x equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Anyways, we can just keep doing that. So, so I'm plugging in all of these, and we're going to go 2 times these x values, and that'll equal y. Okay, so here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you'll notice why I'm doing what's 5 times 2 is 10. That's why there's a bigger space right there. Okay, anyway, so um, uh, 2 times uh, 1, we're going to plot those. 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5. So there's uh, 2 times 1, so we're going to graph 1, 2. Okay, so all I'm doing is graphing this ordered pair over 1, up 2. So over 1 is 2 squares, up 2 is two is two okay notice these are going by halves on the x-axis those it's really important you guys to recognize your your um your scales on the x-axis and the y-axis they're usually different okay so um two squares is one on the x-axis but two squares on the y-axis is two so over one up two okay what's two times two well two times two is four so we'll go over two up four so over two is right there up four is going to take us right to there okay so there's over two up four two times three is six so over three up six two times four is eight so over four up eight and over five up ten and then now we'll go ahead and draw a line through those and connect them up to represent all of them so we can go over fractional parts okay let's do one more you guys so let's graph y equals x plus 2.5 okay here i'm going to choose zero one two three we can do one, two, three, four, five, like we did in the last ones. So we can do any of them, okay? So we're just adding 2.5. Let's plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3. So 0 plus 2.5 is 2.5. Okay, so we're going to go, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, over 0, over 0, up 2.5. <coughs> excuse me. So let's, what's 1 plus 2.5? That's 3.5. So we'll go over 1. Up uh, 3.5, so that's going to be like right there, okay? 2 plus 2.5 is 4.5, so there it is, and there's uh, over 3 up 5.5, and connect them up with a straight line. Okay, I hope that makes sense, you guys, and hope you're doing well, and be nice to your groovy teachers. Take care.